Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna explore AutoGPT, which is an autonomous GPT-4 experimental project. And what it claims to do is develop and manage businesses for the purposes of increasing net worth. So you can set a goal such as increasing your Twitter following, starting an online business. It will go do the research for you, come up with a task list, and actually execute on those goals. And it also has a completely continuous autonomous mode, which means no user input is required. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about AutoGPT, then we're gonna go through the installation of it and I'll walk you through that step-by-step, step, and then we're gonna play around with it at the end. Let's get into it. So this is the AutoGPT GitHub. It already has nearly 15,000 stars and 1,700 forks, so it's incredibly popular. And it's by someone named Torin Tulino. And it says, AutoGPT is an experimental open source application showing the capabilities of the GPT-4 language model. This program, driven by GPT-4, autonomously develops and manages businesses to increase net worth. And really what is special about this is it is fully autonomous. It has access to the internet. It can go and execute and continuously run experiments to try to make you money. So first, let's look at the features. It has internet access, which already is super cool because GPT-4 only has internet access if you have the plugin. And this one has it out of the box. Next, it has long-term and short-term memory powered through Pinecone, which I'll show you how to get that set up. And why that's so important is because you're actually able to continue to build on top of a business goal over time. And it can store task lists, it can iterate on those task lists, execute them, create new ones, and it doesn't all need to be done in a single prompt. It does use GPT-4 for the text generation, but I believe you can also plug in GPT-3.5 Turbo if you don't have access to GPT-4. It has access to popular websites and platforms, and it also has file storage and summarization through GPT-3.5. Now, what you're gonna need to get this installed is Python on your computer. You're gonna need an OpenAI API key, and you're also gonna need Pinecone. And again, I'll show you how to do all that a little bit later in this video. And it also supports giving your AI a voice through 11 labs. Now I haven't played with that, but if you want to, you can get the 11 labs API key, plug it in, and the AI will actually talk to you. Now let's get into the installation. It's pretty simple. I had a little bit of issues with Pinecone, but hopefully I don't have them going through it this time with you. So the first thing we're gonna do is clone the repository. So you're gonna come here under the installation section, grab this first piece of code, git clone, and then the GitHub link. We're gonna copy it. We're gonna switch over to our terminal, and then I'm gonna paste it in, git clone. I hit enter, and it clones the repository to my desktop. Now, let's cd into that. So cd auto-gpt, I'll hit enter, and now I've changed directory into that folder. And so that was already the next step, we did that. And the next thing we're gonna do is pip install our requirements. Now, again, to do this, you already have to have Python installed. If you don't have it installed, go ahead and install it. Just Google search how to install Python on your computer. It's very straightforward, but I have it installed, so let's do that. pip install dash r requirements.txt. The requirements file lists all of the dependencies that we're gonna to need to run this. So that's what it's doing. Let's hit enter and it's going to install all of those dependencies. So I've already installed this, that's why you're seeing requirement already satisfied. But when you actually do this, it's gonna take longer and you'll actually see a slightly different output. So the next thing we're gonna do is open up your code editor. I use Visual Studio Code, so let's get that up. Now I've already opened the folder for AutoGPT in Visual Studio Code. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to come to this .env.template file we're gonna click it and we're gonna rename it to just .env. Then we're gonna open it up and it gives us a template to apply all of our API keys that we wanna use. Now, the only ones that I'm gonna be using today are Pinecone and OpenAI. I'm not gonna show you how to do the 11 Labs voice integration, but you're welcome to try that out yourself. You also don't need these Azure keys at the bottom. Uh, if you want to launch this on Azure, you would use that, but we're just gonna do this locally today. Let's switch back to our browser. We're gonna go to OpenAI, and we're gonna grab our account keys. And we find that from platform.openai.com slash account slash API dash keys. 
So let's create a new key. I'm gonna copy it. Let's switch back to our editor. And then on the third line where it says open API key, I'm gonna replace what's there with my key and hit save. Next, we're gonna need our Pinecone information. If you don't already have a Pinecone account, you can get one for free and just go to pinecone.io. So I'm gonna log in. Now with Pinecone's free version, you can only have one index and you don't need to actually create it yourself. AutoGPT will create it once you've given it the right key. So on the left side under API keys, let's click that. Now I already have one, but you can go ahead and create one if you don't. And we're gonna need two things. We're gonna need to copy the key value and I'm gonna place it in the first line of the .m file. And then we're also gonna need the environment and that's the region, which is found right here. So mine is us-west4-gcp. So I'll copy that and I'll place it on the second line right there and I'll save that. So once we have that done, let's switch back to the GitHub repo and see what's next. So the next thing it says to do is actually run the script called main.py. Rather than running it in terminal, I actually prefer running it through Visual Studio Code. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll switch back to Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna open up the scripts folder, go down to main.py, here it is. And then I'm just gonna click this little play button in the top right of VS Code. So the first time you run it, it's gonna take a little while because it has to set up the Pinecone instance. But there it is, done. So it says, welcome to AutoGPT, enter the name of your AI. We're gonna call this BizBot. So BizBot here, I'm at your service. And so now we're gonna describe what the AI's role is. So BizBot's role is to grow my Twitter following. Enter up to five goals for your AI. So number one, create unique Twitter post ideas. Grow my Twitter following. Come up with a cadence for my Twitter posts. And then for goals four and five, I don't need them. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. So one thing to note is as soon as I hit enter, it created a file on my desktop called AI underscore settings .yaml. So if you see that file, it didn't just get created out of nowhere. It was created when you hit enter here. Okay, so I actually had to restart it. And the nice thing about this is even if you restart it, it continues from where you left off. So you don't need to start all over. So that's what we're doing. And now we are thinking, and here we go. BizBot thoughts. I need to come up with unique Twitter post ideas and grow the Twitter following. I think a good strategy is to curate interesting articles related to law, share updates about my business and share legal tips or insights. So interesting, I didn't actually specify that my Twitter is mostly about AI. So it automatically assumed that it's gonna be about the law. So you should specify that. And so it gives us a few responses. It tells us its thoughts, its reasoning, what the plan is, so a list of action items, and criticism, so where it could actually go wrong, which the last one I find super interesting. And so here's what it wants to do. The plan is to curate interesting articles related to the law, share updates about my business, share legal tips, post at least once a day and engage with my followers by responding to comments and retweeting relevant posts. So yeah, that is what it would take to actually grow a Twitter following. So next, if we wanna continue with this, we type Y and hit enter. So it's gonna actually go execute on that plan. And the next action is it's gonna browse the website law.com. So that's what it's doing right now. It's actually going to the website, looking around for interesting things that we could possibly turn into Twitter posts. This is so cool. Based on the interesting legal articles I found on the law.com homepage, I think I can curate some posts from these articles. I should also check some hashtags that are popular in the legal industry to better understand what my target audience is interested in. So now it reformed our plan, our next steps, and here's the criticism. I need to make sure my posts are not only relevant and provide value, but they are also tailored to my target audience. I should monitor my metrics to see if I'm growing my following and adjust my strategy if needed. And the next action is looking for popular legal hashtags. So go ahead, let's do it. And we can just keep going like this. And it's super cool. So it can run and each time it's gonna tell me what it's thinking, it's gonna tell me what the next steps are. And then I hit yes and continue. And it will just continue to hopefully grow a business out of this. Now, it also has something called continuous mode. Now you notice every single step, it's asking me to confirm I wanna continue. In continuous mode, you don't need to confirm anything at all. And it gives a big warning for this. If you enable continuous mode, it's gonna use a ton of your API resources. 
So you just have to keep that in mind. And that's it. I find this incredibly cool and the world of autonomous AI is really starting to blossom. If you do something cool with it, please share it in the comments below. I'd love to see it. And I'll link everything in the description below. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.